And you know what Jesus said? Sit down. Make the men sit down. In other words, that's all it is. That's all it takes. Everybody may be seated. God bless you. In this familiar passage of Scripture, another one of the great miracles of our Lord Jesus, and individuals that did not come prepared for the events of that day but are for the length of the message that Jesus taught. And I often think of his services or his teachings or his time with people being similar to what we have around here. We'll have a praise break and then we'll have pray for the sick and then we'll say a little bit more and then we'll have a little bit of teaching and a little later on we'll pray again and, and so it just kind of keeps the flow of the atmosphere exciting and electrically charged with the power and the anointing of the Lord. While they were sitting there so very reverently he observed the fact that it was time to eat. And so he began to inquire about that. What are we going to do about that? It was the disciple by the name of Philip that was very logical and very practical in his saying to the Lord, Whence shall we buy bread for these to eat? For he looked at the crowd and knew there was no way that there could have been enough for that crowd to be fed, and uh, even if there had been, how could it be distributed, and how could it be done? And so the Lord knew what he was going to do. He already had a plan in mind. So it was that Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, came, and after they had done a survey, and after that they had looked around and began to inquire. They said, we have a lad here, and he has five barley loaves and two small fish. Oh, hallelujah. James, I, I wonder if you come up here and help Pastor preach tonight. Would you come on up here? Hey, Amen. You look so sharp. I want everybody to see how handsome you are. Thank you. 
That's it. That's it. That means every color, that means every creed, that means every tribe, yes. that means every child, that yes. means every nation, that yes. means every nation, that 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 means every nation, Yeah. You come to him. 
then I'll come to church. Listen, the devil will make sure that you never get everything. That's it. That's it. Got it. Yes. Yes. Just like the little boy. That's it. That's it. Everybody shouting, everybody jumping, everybody saying, preach it. And guess what he said? And such for some of you. And such. Yeah. And such. But you are sanctified. For some of you. That's it. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. He's a gentleman. That's it.
But the key word there that you can undermine in your Bible is how the people get. And read. Many that were. Many that were rich cast in mud. Many that were rich cast in mud. That was what you would expect. Read. Mm -hmm. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which made the cause. Read. And he came, and he called unto him his disciples, and sat unto, uh, said unto them, Verily I say to you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast. Amen. Yes, that's right. She gave more.
Yep. You gotta give him something to work with. Yep. You gotta trust him. You gotta believe him. You yep. gotta say, Lord, I, I'm feeling this and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to step out on a limb. You're not really stepping out on a limb. He's going out there with you. Yep. He's gonna be with you. Yep. He's gonna make sure that he follows up with his word. Yep. His word cannot lie. He said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was going, now this is another story. This is the other side of the coin. This is the part sometimes that more people can relate to than not. Unfortunately. And when he was going forth into the way, and there came one running and kneeled down to him and asked him, What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Read. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, be robbed not, honor thy father. Well, he really ran him off, didn't he? Read. And he answered him, <coughs> Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and take up thy cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away free, he was sad. for he had great possessions. A sad story in the Bible. Yeah. He was sad. I said a sad story in the Bible. Someone that has the ability to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Someone that had the ability and the means whereby they could be a tremendous blessing in the kingdom of God. A good individual. Not a crook. Not a thief. Not an individual with a bad reputation. You heard him tell, or we read what he said to Jesus. Jesus told him to keep the commandments, and when he started rattling them off, Jesus started rattling all the different commandments off. Scroll that back up there for the Bible. Started rattling off all those don't be frauds and, and honor your father and mother, and, and see if you can find that one. Put that back up there. What verse was that? There you go. You know the commandments. Don't commit it over. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't cry. Don't honor your father and mother. Boy, said, I've kept all those from my youth. Ever since I was a child, I've obeyed those commandments. And you know what? Jesus looked at him, and Jesus loved him. Isn't it interesting that that would be slipped in there? That mark in his writing? would slip that little phrase in there. He didn't have to put that in there. But I believe it was put in there for a purpose. To know that Jesus, even though he knew the heart of that young man, he loved him and he had compassion on him. And so he looked at it and he said, there's one thing that you're lacking. And all it is, is that you're willing to give. I believe with all of my heart, that if he had been willing to give, I believe as he was giving his all to the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me your bill, Paul, Andrew. I believe the Lord would have done this. Come and follow me. Right. And give it right after. You see that? You're willing to give it. You're willing to give it. Okay? I believe the Lord would have said, That's right. Come and follow me. All right. What he would have wanted was his willingness to give. What he would have wanted Abraham was, was his willing. willingness to let go. Abraham was willing to take his own son's life. And give it back to the Lord. Amen. What he was wanting was to see in the heart and in the life right. and in the mind of that young man. 
that's correct. The willingness to say, I don't know what trash is, I don't really know what it's going to involve. I don't really know how I'm going to get by. But I here I am. Sunday in the month.
doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter which one. We just want everybody prayed for. We want everybody to have somebody. So just come right on and, and don't be shy. We're going to pray for them. If you rather not come all the way up to them, uh, just just come as close as you can and we're going to pray. Amen. And I believe God's going to be with them. I believe God's going to touch them. I believe God's going to protect them. God's going to watch over them. Hallelujah. It don't have to be your own child. You can just adopt somebody here for just a few minutes. We're not going to ask you to close them for me, but we just want you to pray for them. Amen. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. We don't know what they're going to face. We don't know what they're going to have to go through. We don't know what is going to come. But I do know this. These are special individuals. Oh, yeah. Amen. So when they walk the halls of those schools, they are carrying with them the blood of Jesus and the spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. They're going to be protected by this prayer that you are praying. And I want all of you adults to listen to me right now real clearly. I want you to pray as if your prayer was what protected them. That's how serious I want you to take. That if you knew they were in danger and your prayer was the only thing that was going to protect them, that's how I want you to pray. Because you see, we don't know what they're going to face. So we don't know what's going to come along. But I believe in it. I trust in God that His hand of protection is going to be on every one of us. Would you touch him and pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ? I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of these children and over every one of these young people. I believe that I pray tonight for this congregation that your protection will be upon me, that your spirit will overshadow me, that your angels will encamp around the mountain.
can't go with them. You can't go with them. But the Spirit of the Lord is going to go with you. So it's going to be all right. I believe they're going to be a witness. I believe they're going to be a testimony. I believe they're going to let their light shine. And I don't want them to be afraid. And the reason I say this is because I know that there are many, many challenges sometimes. The, the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown. Sometimes we have individuals that are going from grammar school into high school. That's a big fear. They've never been down that big hallway in those classrooms. We have some that are leaving home and going to college. That's a big step. Yes. Sister Sarah is going to be leaving here in just a few days for IBC. That's a big step. But I want them to know that this church is going to be praying for them. And that we're going to be covering them with our prayers every day. That God's going to protect them. And God's going to keep them. And God's going to watch over them. And everything's going to be all right. Aubrey, she's already been for one term, and so she's an old pro at this. But you know what? She still gets lost. She still gets homesick. She still misses all of us because there'll be a Sunday night when you're coming riding, and she's got a phone, and she'll say, Here, Papa, here, Papa, you've got to say hi. you got to say hi to Aubrey because she's really homesick tonight. And so she passes that phone around, and we're all waving and saying, Hi. But did you know what? When we do this, it lets them know. Even when they get a long way from home, we all stood up there together and we prayed together. Yes. And we got prayed over. So it doesn't make any different time to be alright. God's going to take care of them. God's in your protected gu guardian angels over them, over our children, in our schools. Help them, Lord. Help them, God, and protect them. Self or what? Give myself away.
Fellowship of Church. Those that's never been here, it used to be the Second Baptist. social media platforms. Yes. All the children. Now, Lord, go with us and protect us and give us a good night's rest. Amen, yes. And help us to be a witness for you. Yes, God. Yes, God. I pray, Almighty God, that your will be accomplished and performed for every one of us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.